The biggest misconception is that herpes zoster is a mild illness. In fact, it can be quite severe, disabling, and there is some data to suggest that it may even increase the risk of strokes in certain subsets of patients. Herpes zoster can have long-term implications. Both the scarring and the pain can be very distressing and debilitating for our patients. The diagnosis of shingles or herpes zoster is generally made by pattern recognition. Uh, what is called in the blink of an eye or Augen blink. You just see it and you know it. The dermatomal distribution is one of the keys to the diagnosis. You'll see vesicles or papules in a dermatomal distribution not crossing the midline. That being said, sometimes people have lesions outside of the dermatome that can be confusing. Herpes simplex can be one of those. Although we think of herpes simplex as um, classically in the oral or anogenital area, it can present on the trunk and be confused with herpes zoster. Occasionally, you'll have one or two outside of that. Then we think of the disseminated zoster, where by definition, you have over 20 lesions outside of the dermatome. And this is more common in the immunocompromised patient. And if it's in an atypical location, it can be difficult. So what's an atypical location would be starting in the scalp, right, where you might not be able to see the rash, but the patient has what they're calling a headache. The quality of the pain and the description of the headache would be the clinical clue to ask additional questions which might lead you to believe it's herpes zoster. When patients present with herpes zoster, one must inform them of the risk of post-herpetic neuralgia because that is not rare. That could be, in, depending on the age of the patient, in up to 50% of the patients. We don't really think about the long-term scarring that happens as a result of herpes, and it can be really debilitating and noticeable, particularly to people who have the initial reaction on the face. The use of antivirals early in the course of disease trend towards reducing the duration of the rash and pain and decrease the severity. After 72 hours, treatment with antivirals doesn't necessarily have much of an effect in an immunocompetent patient. In your immunosuppressed patient, however, you'll treat even if it's after 72 hours because they have an increased risk of dissemination and complications. There's been a lot of controversy as to whether or not glucocorticoids in combination with antiviral treatments can help with herpes zoster. Data suggests at this point that there's no evidence to use glucocorticoids in conjunction with herpes zoster, particularly for immunocompetent patients with traditional herpes zoster. Another complication is depends on the location of the disease. So people can get herpes zoster along their nerve that goes to the eye and the cornea, and they can get what's called herpes zoster ophthalmicus which can permanently affect vision and lead to visual disability. In my view, any eye complaint uh, that presents with the rash that occurs on the face, I would want the ophthalmologist to do a thorough exam to obtain a baseline. Where I wouldn't worry about it is, as an example, if it's on the neck or on the lower part of the jaw. So I only counsel people to see an ophthalmologist if it's on the face, surrounding the eye, and actually in particular when it involves a nasal tip, because that can suggest that the virus has affected the ophthalmic branch of the trigeminal nerve. So even if it's not around the eye, but on the nasal tip, they should be going to an ophthalmologist. But there are some rare complications that are particularly concerning. You can see encephalitis, meningitis, keratitis, pneumonia with patients who have zoster, particularly disseminated zoster, but also um, confined to the dermatome. Herpes encephalitis is a severe illness. The patient will come in rather sick, and it would be in the differential diagnosis of a confused elderly person with a rash, as an example. And the patient may have other focal neurological signs, particularly along the cranial nerves. There is at least one study in the literature that suggests that the rate of stroke may go up in patients uh, over age 65 after an episode of shingles. The reason why that's important is because if the patient has a case of shingles and then calls you with another new neurological syndrome, you would make that an emergency. So there are rare complications, but they're very serious complications that you have to be aware of when you're seeing patients who present with zoster. Hi, my name is Kelvin, and I work on the team that creates the content that you've just seen, Medscape TV. If you like the content and want to see more, click on the button to the right, and it'll take you to the full series.